Ah, we are excited for today's video, especially because we have something a little fun <laughs> coming at the end of the video if you watch to the end. But the substantive part is we have 10 SEO improvements you can make for your site in 10 minutes that will change your SEO for 10 years. And we decided today that we'll go out and film this in a tent. Oh, no. no it's maybe See, too it was much. doing okay until okay. that, and then you took it too far. All right. All right, the number one, um, the right way to index your posts. So people kind of panic about this. When you yeah. have your new website, you you want Google to index the post, to go through it, with, uh, to, have, to have it crawled so that it can start deciding where it should rank mm -hmm. in, in the Google search mm -hmm. results. So a lot of people will take each article and they'll go submit that URL to Google. It's not necessary to do that. Google is going to find your content and they're automatically going to set a crawl schedule according to how often you're publishing content. If a website is putting out content constantly, very, very often, they're gonna crawl you more often. Exactly. If you have like a big e-commerce site with like thousands of different pages, then you know, just create an XML sitemap. Mm -hmm. um, your theme or your SEO plugin are probably gonna do this for you and submit the sitemap to Google and that's sufficient. If you have a blog that over the first two months you're gonna write 30 posts on, that is not even at all close we, to We necessary. just don't even bother no, with No, we that. don't. They're we don't gonna find you it. just fine. You don't have to actually do that. Okay, the second one is to This add... one's a little ninja. <laughs> this is like you're actually gonna see a bump in your traffic. It's crazy this. too. Like use tables wherever you can. Mm -hmm. So you can go through an old blog post that's just you know got some good information in it and if you can like put that info into just an easy to read table. Um, that's gonna help with SEO in part because it's gonna help you win a lot more snippets. Yeah, that's like the key. We're seeing more so and more tables. It's, snippets yeah. are the, you know, the feature, the rich text, the, the text anyway, yeah. that it's putting on a search result uh, where it's just answering your question right there, right? And we used to have, we used to like focus on just, you know, answering it in a sentence. And often that's the right sure. way. But what we saw is over the course of the last few months, like a huge portion of those that include data, Google is searching for a table to show. Yep. And so go through some old posts that have data, but you, where you've written it out and just add some tables. I'll bet you you snag a couple snippets and, that you didn't have before. And keep that in mind going forward as you write posts. Like, is this content that would be better, like, would it be better for the reader if it was in a table format? Mm -hmm. If it would be better for the reader, then Google is going to want to put a table out there mm -hmm. as the snippet. And then you can win position number zero and likely um, rank very high outside of the snippet as well. Snippet optimization is huge yeah. in SEO right now and nobody is talking about it. Um, in Project 24, you'll see our post recipe where we give you exactly how to structure a post and we, we've structured it that way so that Google will grab the, so that the right parts of the post are very visible to Google so you can exactly. win it and so you're structuring it right. As well as we have a lesson on uh, snippet optimization. Yep. All right, number three. Yeah, um, compressing your images. We like to use Short Pixel. There are plugins that'll Just do it for you. Short Pixel. Yeah. <laughs> um, there's plugins like Short Pixel that will do it for you. You could manually resize every image as you upload it, but the beauty of what Short Pixel does is, first of all, there's two different plugins, right? There's the compression plugin, and then there's the image resizing plugin. They'll actually resize your images for you um, at the different sizes that you use. So like a thumbnail will be a different size image than a, than a page wide image. Um, and then the second thing they're gonna do for you is they're gonna compress that image using an algorithm that frankly is better than what even Photoshop will do. Much Photoshop better. is designed yeah. for photographers, right? It's mm -hmm. not designed for web. And so they are compressing your image to where you can often reduce the size of an image by like, like a third 60, of what Photoshop yeah. can do with with comparable quality. Right. Like you can't tell like the difference. You look credit. you look at the original, they'll do this like side by side. Here's the original, here's the compressed image and you look at it you're like Same All right. Thing. I'm good. Yeah. I'm good. So, anyway, absolutely it's going to help with SEO cuz it's going to dramatically improve page load speeds, mm -hmm. which is definitely also important for SEO. Every WordPress owner should have Short Pixel installed. Yes. All right, the next tip is about EAT, expertise, authoritativeness, and trustworthiness. Yes. Um, <laughs> we've been corrected on the precise words there. Yes. Um, we usually say trust instead of trustworthiness. Right. Okay, so this is Google's new 
pet friend, right? It just, they are obsessed right now with making sure the author of blog posts has this eat, um, that they are a trustworthy source of information. Mm -hmm. And we've seen this especially in the medical and things that impact your life, uh, you know, medical and financial kind of industries, but it's really expanding yeah, yeah. everywhere. All over the place. So it's so easy to make some common sense, easy changes on your website in under 10 minutes that could dramatically improve the SEO of a, of a site, especially if you're in those industries, but really any. So here are just the common sense, easy first steps to make. Have an about me, about me page that you've actually written out. Did you speak to a conference? Link to that conference. Have you written a book on Amazon? Link to that. Uh, just write a full about me page, right? Easy. Then go to every other website that you do control, um, especially your social profiles, and link to them from there to your about me page. Go to your LinkedIn profile and link mm -hmm. from there to your about me page. Your Facebook, link from there. If you have a, a YouTube channel for the account, link to your about me page. Uh, if you're a professional, you're an accountant or something and you're writing about a similar topic, link from your you know, local business page over to that. Do everything you can do to just show Google the expertise, authoritativeness, and trustworthiness that you do have. <laughs> exactly, awesome. The next one is, um, there's a plugin. WP old date remover. It's now, awesome. if you're using Akabato, your posts don't display the date. And this is important for SEO. Um, it's weird, even on really evergreen topics, mm -hmm. how people kind of get hung up on this. Like, ah, this post is a year and a half old. I think I want something newer. Yeah. Um, and so even if Google doesn't care, even if Google still sees the content as relevant, um, users that see that date showing up in the search results, um, they may not click on your article because it looks old or outdated. And so just remove those dates and the WP Old Date Remover plugin will do that for you or um, your theme may be able to just remove the, the date meta tag from your search result and then no date will display. Okay, this next one is fascinating to me. So we have seen a pretty tight correlation between the length of a blog post and the success on, on search. In general, longer posts win. And so we looked through, so we have set up three different types of posts, response staple and pillar posts that we teach in the course. Um, and we've mentioned lots of times uh, these different lengths of posts between 1,000 and 3,500 words to kind of match different search queries, right? Right. There is a really good reason for that and it does make a significant change. However, what we did find is that the time you spend on the post uh, in doing unique, important research on the topic is a lot more valuable than just the words. I think the word count is, is more of a, a byproduct of the amount of research and information you have to share. Yeah, and so that's the important point is like, that's a, it's a correlation. Mm -hmm. It's not that necessarily if you write more words, you, you will rank better. Right. It's that if you put in the effort to put a lot of research into it, and so you've created a really valuable resource, it will often end up being longer. Mm -hmm. And because it's a better resource, it'll rank better. Yeah, so think research, not words. Not that we want you to just write all short blog posts, but let's say I were uh, Googling something like, I'm interested in be becoming self-employed, and so, um, or if I were interested, yeah. I, I am interested. <laughs> Already am. <laughs> um, if I were interested in that, uh, I might Google how much does self-employed health insurance cost? That's hard to find an answer for, right? You know, you Google it and everybody wants you to go through this process to get a quote. But a blog post that just says like 20 examples, like here right. are a few families of four or five people and this is what they pay with different coverages and stuff. That would really help me out to get an idea. Exactly. And so I can spend forever researching the different factors and writing about where to get a good deal and stuff, or I could call 21 different insurance companies and get actual quotes and just put them there. It may only take me 1,200 words to do that, and it's uh -huh. just how do you beat that resource? What blog post could anyone write that's more helpful than what you did because you took the time to research it? Now again, we're not saying write short blog posts and word count doesn't matter anymore. What we are saying is what matters more is the research. Exactly, and um, it, what matters more is the research and then the resource that you create for people. So um, if you think about it this way, uh, people are usually more interested in something that solves their problem than in 
information that helps them solve their own problem. Yes. And so if I'm looking into health insurance for self-employed people and I read a blog post that tells me, well, if you make above this much, then you're no longer eligible for, you know, whatever. And so now you're going to have to pay more. And if your family's this big and if this is your health and this is your age and they give me all the factors and lay out how they're all going to impact it, I still have to do a lot of work in my head to figure out how much it's going to cost me. And I probably still have to call and get a quote. If you just make a table that has all this awesome information in it, I can find where I fit in the table. And now I have a ballpark of what it's going to cost me. So when I do go get a quote, and if you've talked to seven different companies, I'm like, man, for me on that table, this company gave the lowest quote to them. Yep. Well, now I know exactly where I'm going to start. Okay, so that's one that it's not going to take you 10 minutes. It's going to save you like 10 hours in yes. writing your blog post. <laughs> uh, all right, the next one is when you're writing the headline. So your click-through rate matters a lot um, in your in the search result. Yeah, you may be ranked number three, but if, you're, if your title is good enough, because most people are going to scan the first few, uh -huh. uh, that you're getting all the clicks, who, you who move cares? up to number one. And you likely You do, will you change. probably move up, but it's it's true. If you get all the clicks, who cares if you ranked number one or number three? So here's a quick tip for for getting better headlines. Write your boring title and then Google it. And then go down into the related searches and you're trying to get the mentality of what people are looking for. So for example, um, I was looking at how to cut the foam in a Pelican case, like for putting equipment in there. Right. You know, you'll get these foam that you wanna cut it out perfectly for some whatever you're putting in there. And so I Googled it and at the bottom, like all the related searches were without an electric knife, without a hot knife, without a this, without a that. And I realized like, oh, all the other tutorials teach you how to do it with specialized equipment. Right. And so if I write how to cut the foam in a Pelican case without any special tools, right. you're going to do really exactly. well. Exactly. You can get the mentality of what the searcher wants and they're not finding. Right. So every single person that's looking for a way to cut that foam that doesn't have the specialized tool, every one of them is going to click on your post no matter where you landed on the search result. It's awesome. The next one is about local SEO. We don't talk about local SEO very much and I think... Um, Honestly, like everything that we teach, our whole approach works awesome for local SEO with a few little additions, and these additions can be done very, very quickly. So if you have a local site, 10 minutes, right. you can totally change it to work for local. Exactly. So you're writing blog content because that's what we teach. Here's the addition you put on every blog post. NAP, name, address, phone number, right? <laughs> Take a nap. Um, in your headline, right? in Boise, Idaho, right? Um, just make it very specific to your local business and that NAP information, that name, address, phone number. Have your company name, the full address, including the city and state. They wanna know you are yes. a local business and your phone number, including a local area code. Right. So they know this really is a business in Boise. And that signals to, to Google that if I'm in Boise and I'm looking for realtors and you have tons of awesome blog content and I've Googled something like, you're gonna show up for that local search much more often than other people. Have it on every page of your website, so the best place to put it is probably in your footer. Maybe in a header, you have your phone number, whatever it is, yes. but have those three things on every page. So that's the first thing you gotta do. Right. The second thing, create a Google My Business account um, and you know have photos of your business, have reviews, 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 yeah. um, uh, to make sure that's, uh, that is taken care of. And then the last thing that you really need to do is when you're writing your articles, Keep in mind the audience you want to attract. If all your blog posts are focused at a national audience, then it, it's not accomplishing your purpose as a local business. So right. just keep it in mind. Cater the content to that specific audience. Exactly. All right, the next one, this one isn't something that will take you 10 minutes. It's something that's going to save you 10 minutes over and over and over again. It's like negative time. <laughs> it's negative time. It's time that you get to win back. And that is to stop worrying about a meta title and meta, uh, a meta description for every blog post and meta tags, these things are a waste of time. And here's why. Meta tags, Google doesn't look at them Yeah, the anymore. meta keywords, it's is, just they haven't ridiculous. looked at that in years. If you write a really good headline that has like the cool little, you know, um, without specialized equipment part tag at the end of the headline, that's going, your headline is by default going to be the meta title 
for your blog post, that's what's gonna show up in the search results. So just write good headlines. Right, so if you have WordPress set up normally, yeah. and you're just writing the title of the page, what displays on the page, it's already gonna show as your title for, for the blog post, right? You don't also need to fill it in. Right. The only reason you'd need to do it in, a, in an SEO plugin or something to enter the title is if you, for some reason, want it to display something different on Google than what it does on the page. Right. I, I haven't really run into that. Some people say they, they do for some reasons, and so it's there, but. Yeah. The other one, and this is where you're gonna save the most time, is the meta description, mm -hmm. okay? People are taking the time to write out a description of the blog post, and because that's what they want to display on the SERP, on the search engine result page. Um, first of all, uh, if you don't do that, then sort of the default for kind of generic searches is just gonna be the first couple sentences of your blog post. Mm -hmm. And if you just write a couple of good first sentences of your blog post, you're now good. you don't have to write the description. But here's the other thing. We, we did a bunch of searches to look at this. And what we're finding is like even blog posts that specify a meta description for a blog post, mm -hmm. probably about five to 10% of the time it's being used. The rest of the time, Google is choosing a segment of the blog post that is most relevant to the search which is better anyway, mm -hmm. right? They're picking their own meta description. So is it maybe still a best practice? I mean, sure, but yeah. we've found that it's just not worth the time. We don't do it and we have millions of page views uh, and it, it, it'll just work just great. Um, yeah. So I, I just wouldn't even worry about doing it. So number 10, this one's kind of cool, um, pretty ninja, I think. What? And that is to create a custom report to identify the best time to post new posts. All right, this is neat. Yeah. Because it's not obvious in Google Analytics how to do it. Right. You'll go into Google Analytics, you'll click on customization, custom reports, new custom report, and then you'll add your title or name, doesn't really matter. For the metric suit, choose sessions, and then for dimension, drill down or search hour. Not hour of the day, but just hour. hour. Um, and what that's gonna do is it's gonna show you the time and what when it's most active. Now, this is not the same for all sites. Income School, is our audience is much more active in the mornings and on Mondays. <laughs> <Where do I? laughs> what we find is people go to work and we're like, shoot, I really should have just started that blog. <laughs> I hate this. Whereas something like Camper Report, more hobby focused, it's active on weekends and at night. Yes. So by knowing that, like, okay, you post your blog post at a more active time, it doesn't really matter, people are gonna find it when they find it, right? But now that you know that information, when you're making posts on social media, if you're posting on YouTube, if you have browser notifications for new blog posts, that actually can make a very big difference, and now you know exactly when it will be. Exactly. Okay, so 10 awesome tips to improve your SEO <laughs> in under 10 minutes that will last you But we have a little years. bit of fun for you. Yes. If you've stuck around this far into the video, <laughs> we are gonna do a little comment contest. Uh, restrictions apply, no purchase necessary to win. Um, <laughs> you'll see this beautiful, I'll just, come on guys, yeah, come with this. us. We're gonna go on a field trip. This is what uh, some of our employees have termed the cabinet of curiosities. Um, and someone who writes a comment, write something substantive, but then also include what you would pick, what you want from the cabinet of curiosities. And we are going to pick a winner <laughs> and mail something to you. So take a good look, everybody. Some fine, fine stuff here. That's fake grass. You can't just get that anywhere. <laughs> There's some fine items here. Old comic. Mmm. -hmm. I know you want it bad, and somebody's gonna win it. Good luck. <laughs>